trying to do something interesting for the switches because I like them toggle switches. Uh, but I've already done one test and it didn't go that well. I've got another plate here and I have to kind of get this done because I'm going away in a week. So yeah, we're going to experiment and hope it turns out well. Um, but yeah, here's what I'm going to do. For this, we're going to be using the badass drill bits that my mate Jack sent me. It's the roof rail all over again. This is supposed to be a dead simple job. Uh, like 15 minutes putting some holes in a piece of metal. But the drill bits died again. They're supposed to be like some of the most expensive drill bits you can get. And this is the first time I've used this one. And it's, it's not finished that hole. And it's not even started that hole. Uh, I'm not sure if you could see that, but it's starting to bend the whole plate and like it's gone further through than when I started. But I think it's just melting through like that's, yeah, that's, uh, oh, I mean, that's hot. Yeah, that's, that's just melted. It's not cut. Ugh. Somebody please let me know what I'm doing wrong in the comments because this happened on the roof rack, no, the solar panel when I was drilling the roof rack and I just, well, that video is going to be up in the top right hand corner somewhere. I just kept on ruining drill bits and that's why my mate Jack sent me a pack of drill bits. Sorry Jack, but I've ruined all those Hilti drill bits now. Um, but yeah, like even with this big one, it's kind of chopping through, but it's, it's making this weird shape. Like, look at that. Like... I don't know what's I don't know what's going wrong. This is just gonna end up looking horrible, but I need to get it done. Yeah. As you're gonna see in the next clip, it's starting to look a really, really horrible. Somehow I managed to get all five holes cut without it looking terrible and mounted all the switches. First I had to hook up the fridge. Now originally it was gonna be on the switch panel, but then I decided it's got its own switch so it doesn't need it. After doing a bit of cable management ready for the switch panel to be connected, I decided to install the USB socket next to my bed. It's not on the switch panel, but it has a switch, so meh. So I just went to feed my first set of cables down here to go to my switches, which you just saw me cut. And there's a piece of wood in the way because I put a piece of wood going across to stabilize my um, shelf that the camera is on right now. Shit. Not sure where we're going to be up to. I think I've lost a bit of continuity by removing the beard. But anyway, um, for all the electrics around here, just like kitchen light, bathroom light, stuff like that, I'm going to add a second fuse box. I saw this on Greg Vigo, or Virgo? I can never remember. He's got some awesome videos, you should watch them. And he added a second fuse box when he needed a few more USB chargers. So I'm going to do it for my lights and stuff around here. So this is gonna go up here, but there's nowhere really to mount it because I haven't finished this cabinet yet. So I'm gonna mount it on a piece of wood like that and stick the wood up there. So it should be fine. Like the fuse box in my main electrics video, all I'm doing here is stripping the cables, adding ring connectors. That way I can just screw them directly onto the fuse box.
<laughs> the toggle switches have screw threaded terminals, which is really handy because you can just add ring connectors to the wires and screw them directly on. I've done all these slanted so that they don't touch the back there. Oh, I fucked this up. I fucked this up badly. I was having trouble mounting the switch panel and I've got a plug socket to go on there as well. So my mate Jack suggested these drywall socket boxes. Uh, I'm gonna give these a go. If it does work, it means I'm gonna have to smash out a load of holes for all the cables on that one. The other one's fine. I'll just poke one hole for the cable. So let's give it a try. I've actually removed the panel in to cut it in my workshop to make sure it's nice and accurate. It's nice and good because I don't want this going wrong. As usual, a five minute job has literally just taken me two and a half hours. Just fitting that little bit of plastic to make the switches a bit more secure took an extra two and a half hours instead of 10 minutes. And now I'm really worried that the switches are so tight in the back that the cables are bending. So there is a very serious chance they might snap and I might have to pull it out or They've crossed over and I'm going to get an electric shock when I turn the electrics back on. So you want to be my enemy You should have known I'd never kiss the rain Ice runs in my veins Won't play it safe I don't belong with your nobility Who died and made you king of anything you think that I'm insane, it's your mistake Kingdoms rise and fall, I've come to take it all I'll take it, I've come to take it Kingdoms rise and fall, I've come to take it Well, that was a terrible video, wasn't it? And I don't mean just all the problems. The problems were making me forget to press record and sometimes they were pissing me off that much that I just didn't record. 
Now when I started out I thought this was going to be quite a good video because I've not seen anyone do switches that way and there's probably a reason, it's probably an absolute pain in the ass, like a found. Um, but yeah, I really like those toggle switches, they're quite cheap, they were rated up to about 20 amps which is fine. Drilling through that chrome plate was an absolute nightmare but once I'd got it all together it looked kind of nice and then even the USB socket I managed to cut through that, that's got a chrome plate, the switch on the way in has got a chrome plate so carrying on with the kind of chrome details here and there in my van, you know overall it looked good when it was finished. Now with the additional fuse box I did use, I think it was 3mm wire and then I checked the other things that were going to be on that circuit like the USB and the two kitchen lights and I think there was another thing. So all combined they were never going to cause any problems the wire that it was connected with. Those drywall sockets were an absolute lifesaver for actually mounting them to the thin cladding. Um, so yeah I'd recommend that if anyone else is doing something similar. And when I was testing the switches out you obviously caught glances of little bits on the van that have already been done like the sink was working. I'm going to make sure that is the next video that we get onto. Anyway, if you've watched this far, thanks for watching. If you've got any tips, questions or suggestions, stick them in the comments below. And here comes the prices. See you in the next video.